Hey everybody, it's Kent with KG's Books. Today I'm just showing off some of my favorite beautiful Victorian bindings. Uh, I know I've shown this one before, but it is the Peacock edition of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, illustrated by Hugh Thompson. Uh, this one was published in 1894 by Macmillan and Company. Uh, it's pretty obvious why this one is called the Peacock edition. And it is uh, probably not the most rare as far as Jane Austen, but it is definitely the most highly sought after. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, prefaced by George Saintbury and illustrated by Hugh Thompson. Show you a few of the illustrations in this one. Very nice artwork. And again, one of the uh, prettiest and most notable bindings of the Victorian era. Really, really great one. Uh, we got another Jane Austen. This is Sense and Sensibility. And again, really, really beautiful binding. Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. Introduction by Joseph Jacobs and illustrated by Chris Hammond, published in 1899. Again, some really great Victorian illustrations in that one and again beautiful binding give you a close-up of some of the floral designs beautiful 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 next we have sense and sensibility by jane austen illustrated by hugh thompson again uh, this binding was designed by Albert Angus Turbane. There's his AAT initials hidden right there in the binding. And again, a really nice floral binding. Beautiful red cloth and really great condition on that one. Uh, Albert Angus Turbane, he was, uh, he didn't design a ton of bindings, but his work is some of the most beautiful work out there, in my opinion. Got the beautiful peacock end papers. Pretty little frontispiece. Uh, this one was published in 1896. Let's see if I can show you a couple of the illustrations on that one as well. Uh, so the peacock edition, that one usually runs... Um, you can usually find a beat up copy for about 1500 but then some dealers are asking as much as uh 10,000 um this one i'm not sure what exactly it's worth i paid 400 i think it might be worth a little bit more than that um the condition this one's a little more hard uh to find than the pride and prejudice and the condition is next level awesome so yeah that's a nice little lineup of jane austen and the extra fancy bindings. Uh, this binding was also designed by Albert Angus Turbane. Again, you see his initials right there. Uh, this is Captain Marriott. I actually have a complete set of these. These are really hard to find. Um, and if you do find them, dealers are asking anywhere from a hundred to uh, three or four hundred dollars a piece. I think I got a really killer deal when I bought my set. And really, some of these are very hard to come across. Again, with the peacock end papers, nice gilt page edges. Uh, most of Captain Marriott's works were nautical themed adventures. Um, and then some other adventure type novels as well. This one was published in 1896 by M Macmillan and Company. Uh, this one is Mr. Midshipman, e Mr. Midshipman Easy. There you go, you got the nice illustration above a ship. Another illustration on the ship. And you get beautiful binding with the ship. You got the seashells, you got the some sort of sea monsters, beautiful waves. Got the seagulls. It's a 
another one of my favorite bindings. Uh, sticking with the Peacock theme, we got a nice little copy of Mill on the Floss. The pretty Peacock feathers on the spines. Got the nice gilt titles on the covers. Um, I think these are actually kind of hard to find as well. Mill on the Floss by George Eliot in two volumes. Show you the decorative title page. Then the frontispiece, probably not the most exciting title in the world, but I just like the bindings. Look at the floral end papers. Again, spines covered in peacock feathers. Uh, once again with the peacock feathers. I think I think there's some collectors out there that just collect peacock feather bindings. So uh, this is this one again. I think is hard to find. If any of you have a copy of this, let me know. The Church in the Valley by E. H. Mitchell. Also got the peacock feathers on the spine. And again, like I think that's probably the most detailed peacock feather I've ever seen on a binding. Very realistic. The Church in the Valley, a tale by Elizabeth Harcourt Mitchell. Illustrated by E. Hopkins. No date, but I would guess that's 1880s or 1890s. Nice medieval style. Frontispiece illustration. Again, very nice peacock feather binding. Uh, once again with the peacocks, we got celebrated comedians. And actually, I got two different uh, copies of this one. You got the green cloth and the maroon cloth. I think this must be it for uh, my collection of peacock bindings, but there's a ton of them out there. Celebrated Comedians of Light Opera and Musical Comedy in America by Louis C. Strange. Strang. Illustrated, published 1901. I think they're the same, same title. Yep, again, Light Opera and Musical Comedy in America, 1901. Uh, up next, I really like this binding, The Revolt of Angels by Anatole France. Uh, this one also has some cool end papers. The Battle of Good and Evil. The Revolt of Angels by Anatole France, translated by Miss Wilfred Jackson, illustrated by Frank C. Poppy. Gotta show you some of the illustrations of this one. This one was published in 1930. And it does have some very occultish illustrations this is another one that I can never have enough copies of actually I just bought another one last week from a uh, book peddler Phil look him up the book peddler on YouTube also sells on eBay You used to be able to find copies of this one for like 30 to 40 bucks. Now a nice copy is going to run you probably 75 to 100. I've sold copies for as much as 150. And they're getting very hard to find. Uh, I got a nice copy of Black Beauty. Really like the binding on that one with the whips. And the bits and the horseshoes. Just nice little details they added. And the horse head as well. I think this one's from the 1890s. Black Beauty, His Groom and Companions by Anna Sewell. Illustrated, copyright 
up next. Uh, this one doesn't look too exciting, but that's because it has the original dust jacket on. Take the dust jacket off and look what we have underneath. I never understood that. There's uh, several examples from the 1890s where they have the most beautiful ornate bindings and they put a plain dust jacket over it. I mean, it would make more sense to have a fancy dust jacket, but I guess um, some people bought books with the dust jacket and threw the dust jacket away. That's why dust jackets are so uh, valuable right now. Sometimes a huge portion of the uh, value of a book can come from having the original dust jacket. This isn't one of the examples. This one, I mean, having the original dust jacket does help with the value, but um, it's not too exciting. The Queen of the Adriatic or Venice Medieval and Modern by Clara Erskine Clement Illustrated. No date, but at 1890s. This one has some nice illustrations. Different uh, city architecture and scenery. And again, beautiful, beautiful binding. With a very plain dust jacket. Pretty boring. Uh, this is just one volume, but I do have the complete five volumes out of Les Mis by Victor Hugo, and again, could they fit any more gold on that binding? I do not think so. Beautiful geometric design. Count the triangles, how many triangles do you see? Probably about a thousand. So this is just volume five. <sighs> I think this one's from the 1890s. Les Mis by Victor Hugo, 1899. Oh, this one's kind of just a nice simple binding, but I really like it. Hawthorne and Lavender. Kind of just like the butterfly as well. This one is late Victorian, early Edwardian era. Copyright 1901. Hawthorne and Lavender with other verses by William Ernest Henley. Last post. The day's high work is over and done, and these no more will need the sun. Blow your bugles of England, blow, and there gone whither all must go. Mightily gone from the field they won, so that the workday wear of battle, touched with the glory of God's own red, bear your chosen to their bed. Settle down lovingly where they fell, and in good laps where they loved so well. And their deliveries to the dear Lord said, and the last desperate volleys ranged and sped. Blow your bugles of England, blow over the camps and her beaten foe. Blow glory and pity to the victor mother, sat or oh sat in her sacrificial dead. Interesting. Might be worth reading. Uh, we got Sabbath, Sabbath bells chimed by the poets. Again, a really, really fancy binding. You got the bells. All kinds of ornate and floral designs. Beautiful spine as well. Sabbath bells chimed by the poets, illustrated by Brickett Foster. A little Sunday morning frontispiece. No date, but I think this one's probably from the 1860s. Beautiful kind of autumn color scheme for all the illustrations.
right? The right thoughts for the little ones. So you got a little bird up there. You got all the flowers. You got the goose and the little duck or goose and goslings. You got the little baby birds down there. Got the bamboo edging. That's a pretty one. Oh, you even got the insects. Look at the little butterflies and dragonflies. Again, I think this one is also from the 1860s or 1870s. Oh, you even got a little butterfly in the spine too. All kinds of different flowers. Oh, there's another butterfly. Oh, no, that's a leaf. Right, Thoughts for Little Ones, illustrated by John Proctor. Oh, 1866. Ada's pet lamb. Ada was a good, merry-hearted, happy little girl, loved by all who knew her and her very dear mother's heart. She loved to run in the meadows and woods and pick the beautiful flowers or wander in the lanes with her pretty pet lamb trotting at her heels. Okay, I think Mary had a little lamb was a, a knockoff of Ada's little lamb. Curly, curly, curly pet and very dear to me. How I love my pretty one and your family ways to see. In the morning when I wake, ere I leave my little bed. At the door I'm sure to see peeping in your curly little head. Dobbin. Dobbin's the donkey to run at a race. Though you wouldn't think it to look at his face. It's something I tell you to see him with Fred. Stuck up on his back with no cap on his head. There's Dobbin. Dobbin the donkey. Violets. Picking violets, kissing your feet out in the country. Pleasant and sweet, roaming through the meadows, covered with dew. Happier children than monarchs are you. Nice little, beautiful 1866 book of poetry. Uh, the art album. So this one has a really pretty binding and it has some really great artwork inside. Oh, and I love it when they decorate the front cover and the rear cover. Usually the rear cover has the same embossing, uh, but they don't always... Um, color uh, and gilt the rear cover because why would you as long as you have a pretty front cover and spine rear cover is not necessary but I do appreciate when they do that So we have the art album, 16 facsimiles of watercolor drawings, published in 1861. And again, this one has some really awesome artwork. I don't know what printing process this was. And again, beautiful artwork, 1861. Oh, the goldfinch. The suppliant. And thou must leave us for a while. No more that fair young form shall lighten up our fireside like sunshine after storm. No more at early morning time will loved voice tone trill through the dewy air as sweet as, as twear the lintsy's own. Linty's own. Hmm. No idea what that means. Guess I should stick to reading uh, children's poems. Oh, we got the sailor boy with the poem to go with it. And we have the Perry. 
and a beautiful binding. Uh, last one for this video, we got Alice in Wonderland. This one's halfway common, a nice copy. Uh, a nice copy will run you about 150 or $200. You'll probably get a beat up copy for 40 or 50. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland uh, by Lewis Carroll, illustrated by Gwened M. Hudson. Nice color frontispiece, Alice and her cat. Got the rabbit. The lizard and the guinea pigs. Oh, the mad tea party. Coloring the roses. Queen can't make her up her mind what color she wants them. The croquet game. sure exactly who those uh i think that's the mock turtle i don't know who the dragon looking guy is the lobster quadrille that's who that is and again pretty copy of alice in wonderland thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed this video See you next time.